It's well known that the bigger a problem gets in your moment method simulator, for example, Axiom or EM site, the longer it takes to solve and the more memory it has. I want to show you today how to use iterative solvers and how they can both reduce the amount of RAM you need and decrease your solve times. The moment method matrix is created because what we have done is we discretize the conductors, in this case a bend, with uh, simple approximations to the current and what we call rooftops or linear approximations. For example, on the left here we have a blue rooftop, we also have a red one and an orange one. The rooftops, the currents, talk to each other. Uh, they have mutual inductance, they have mutual capacitance, and that is uh, governed by the Green's function. And when you're all said and done, you get the interaction between all of the elements and you form your matrix, in this case A. This particular matrix was formed from uh, 100 unknown currents. Uh, I know that because it's see, the size of the matrix is 100 by 100. On your right are the unknown heights of the currents, which is what we're solving for. On your left is the source, which is basically the rooftops multiplied by your your port region, which is all zero unless that rooftop happens to be uh, where the port is. Okay, the traditional solve time it takes to solve this problem is the follow is the following. After quickly getting the uh, Green's functions, what you have to do is fill the matrix. Now, if the matrix is uh, n unknowns, then the matrix size is n squared, and that's your matrix fill. You got to get all of those elements and you need that amount of RAM. Once you've gotten that, you then have to solve the matrix, and that typically takes with the direct solver order n cubed using variants of Gaussian elimination. Now, let's make sure we understand this. So if I double the number of unknowns in my problem, say from 1,000 to 2,000 unknowns, I need four times as much RAM, and my problem takes eight times longer to solve because we have two cubed as eight. The magenta line is what you can do theoretically with compressed iterative solvers. Both the matrix fill and the solve go as order n log n. Now I should point out that a lot of people say they have iterative solvers, but they're not worried about the matrix fill. So if you fill all of the matrix, it still takes n squared, and you still have all the memory problems. So there's a big difference here between compressed iterative methods and just iterative methods. Basically, each element in your matrix takes 16 bytes, and so if you do the math, for example, with 10K unknowns, it's going to take you 1.6 gigabytes of RAM just to store this matrix. And on my machine, uh, I don't have that much RAM. I have 2 gigs total, so I can't get 1.6. Uh, on my laptop, I can do a maximum of about 6,000 unknowns, which is fairly typical. Again, the matrix solve goes to Zen cubed. Uh, based on Gaussian elimination uh, or vari variants of it. There's a picture of Mr. Carl Gauss, one of the brightest men who ever lived, and people have been staring at a long time how to make these faster. Well, the mathematicians starting in the 1990s figured out a way to do it. And what they did is they recognized that when you look at the matrix, it's, of course, each matrix element is formed from two rooftops interacting. And we break the rooftops up into various groups in our circuit. If the two groups are very far away, shown here separated by distance r, then they don't talk to each other very much. For example, if r is much bigger uh, than the distance to your ground plane. So those matrix elements are going to be very small. And also they're all going to be about the same number because R doesn't change much when we go from one element in the group to the next. And the mathematicians figured out how to take advantage of this, which I'll explain more in a minute. Let me give you a couple quick examples. In case A here in Axiom, I went ahead and did about 30 lines, which is about 13.6K uh, unknowns, which there's no way I could do with a direct solve. And I managed to solve that in 34 seconds on my machine. Case B has about the same number of unknowns, but you'll notice I crossed the lines over. And so therefore, we have more lines that are closer together. The 
uh, trick of the faraway groups doesn't work quite as well, and so the solve actually takes twice as long. Although still at a minute, this is certainly very fast, and there is, again, no way a direct solver on a PC would solve this problem. Okay, well, how does the method work? The idea of the method is it takes the matrix, and remember, in a compressed method, we really haven't figured out all these matrix elements yet. So when you talk to someone and they say they're doing a fast iterative solver, ask them if they're getting the full matrix before they solve it, because then you're stuck with n squared. What we do is, for example, this block up here in the upper right with the blue circle. If you'll see, you'll see like, for example, A127, which is the two cells in very different groups far away from each other. That is a small element. And all the elements in that blue circle are not only small, they probably have about the same value. So what you can do if you have a lot of elements about the same value is use essentially image compression techniques. The math is similar. Here's your original image. And look what happens when I only keep 2.8% of the data if I do it with the right algorithm, which unfortunately I don't have uh, time to go into the details here. And you can see it doesn't do too badly. Notice it does the best where the image isn't changing very much. Where you see a sharp line in the original image, you do tend to get a lot of distortion in the compressed version of the image. So again, compression works best when values aren't changing much. For completeness, I show you when we have 11% of the data. And by 22% of the original data, the image looks almost identical to the original image, at least to the resolution of a computer screen. Okay, so when we take our matrix, what we do is we subdivide it into large blocks, as you can see here with the blue circle. And then what I do is I start subdividing those blocks, and I only subdivide them far enough until I don't see any more change in the values. So I never have to get every value of the original matrix. I'm only looking uh, at, at blocks of this. This corresponds to the layout, which you see on the left, where we're actually taking the original cells and we start subdividing them. And this is what allows us to give, get the order n log n. Again, I have to emphasize we never did the n squared fill. It's a compressed iterative method. The way you set the solver in the software, I don't have time to go into a lot of detail, but essentially what you would do is set up your EM project, go to Options, and look under Axiom, and you will see the solver options with all kinds of different solvers. The solvers I've been telling you about, the compressed iterative solvers, is solver B, the high frequency one, or if you have to go to very low frequencies, think objects a hundredth of a wavelength or less, you could use Solver A, which also is a compressed iterative solver. Well, I hope this little introduction gave you some idea as to the power of iterative solvers. If you have any further questions, please visit our website, awrcorp.com, or feel free to give us a call. Thanks a lot, and have a great day.